I want to talk a little bit about growing coffee on an organic coffee farm. Um, here you can see this tree here has got a lot of foliage on it and it has some very large coffee cherries, some more than half an inch across. This is growing on an organic coffee farm and it's a very healthy tree. You can see it's already starting to flower again too. These are little buds that will turn into flowers in a few weeks. And it still has its coffee crop from this year on it. But not for long. I'm going to pick it pretty soon. You can see how large some of these are. These are more than half of an inch across, these coffee cherries. This is unusual for a coffee farm to find trees this healthy. Often you'll find this on a farm that uses artificial fertilizer. In this case, these trees, the only fertilizer they get is called compost tea, which is sprayed on them a couple times a year. And some of the trees are doing better than others and a lot of it depends on where they're growing. This is a very productive area. The soil here is probably pretty mineral rich all by itself. But why would anybody uh, want to grow coffee organically or inorganically? First of all, I'm going to show you this right here. This is why it's hard to find inorganic coffee because almost everybody is going to spray herbicide. You are literally trying to grow a crop in a jungle environment when you're growing coffee. You can see there's a coffee tree right here and one of its branches is way down right over here and there's another coffee tree right there and you can't even find them because this obnoxious vine here called Desmodium is completely covering it. Not only does this stick and cling to everything, it also irritates your skin when you rub against it. Just look in here. The coffee's buried. So it makes harvesting a lot harder when you're dealing with weeds and pests like this. There's a coffee tree right there. And look, it's buried. So in this kind of environment, people want to use herbicide most of the time. This farm does not use herbicide and uh, uses only natural fertilizer like compost tea, organic approved fertilizer. But you can see the result is a, a monster amount of maintenance. So organic coffee is definitely going to cost more. And when you take it to the mill, you get a little bit more money. However, it's about 10 times the effort. And shortly, I will take us over to a, another farm nearby that is inorganic, a coffee a farm that sprays herbicide and uses artificial fertilizer, and we can see the difference. All right, here's a nearby coffee farm that is not organic. It's in the same neighborhood. And you can see, first of all, you can see that uh, there are no weeds at all growing underneath the trees. And that's because of all the herbicide that's used. You can see some of the lava rocks right over here, bare rocks. It's almost like a moonscape. And the other thing you might notice is uh, how much green foliage are on these coffee trees. They're really a dense green color. And that's because of all the, uh, the artificial nitrogen based fertilizer that's being used. Um, so these, these trees will be a lot larger and hardier simply because of all the fertilizer they're getting. And they don't have as many, uh, they don't have as many weeds to, to compete with. 
but they won't necessarily have any more beans. Um, that's an interesting thing is sometimes even a little scrawny undernourished coffee tree sometimes will have a lot of beans on them. With healthy trees and very little maintenance cost, you can see why a farm like this could be much more profitable actually than an organic farm, even though you can't sell the coffee for as much money. The maintenance costs are so much less that almost all the coffee sold in the world today is not organic. You can see this tree's coming right out of the rocks. So that's organic coffee versus inorganic coffee.